All right, YouTubers, today we have a no-start case. We have a Dodge Ram 2500, has a big V10 engine in it, and uh, it's set for about two weeks, and the guy came out one day, would not start. It cranks over. We've primed it with fuel, done just about everything we can think of right now, and now we're kind of doing some uh, dissecting here, trying to pull things apart, testing some sensors. You can see we've got the air cleaner off right now. We've even shot starting fluid in and still we do not get any running engine now on the passenger side you can see where the coil is here we've actually tested a couple of spark plugs and we are not getting any sparks so we've kind of traced it down to electrical at this point and of course the uh, fuel tank is right here and i can turn the key on and you can hear the fuel pump run check this out And you can hear that, so we know the fuel pump's working and it has a half a tank of gas in it right now. And of course, we've checked all of our fuses, uh, every fuse. I mean, we have pulled everything else. We thought maybe we had a pop fuse, nothing there. And of course, out here where the uh, main fuse box is, we've checked fuses for fuel pumps, crank sensors, everything is working. So we've got a suspicion that either we've got a crank sensor that has gone bad or a camshaft sensor. And of course, on my code reader, we have no codes. And we thought maybe if the crank had gone out, the crank sensor, it would have thrown a code. But it hasn't thrown anything at this point, which is kind of odd. But I've had them go bad and not throw a code before. Even on the pending codes, we have nothing. So uh, one thing here that's really interesting to note on the live data portion of it with the key on you can see that i actually have readings coming out of the eacmu which at this point is a good thing actually if i scroll down all the way down to the throttle position sensor here if i smash the gas pedal a little bit you can actually see that the value is changing here and that's that's also a good thing now as you can see when i push down on the gas pedal here watch this you can see where the uh Throttle position sensor is, it says uh, 14.1. Now, if I'm going to push down on it, there we go. You can see that number changing, so the computer sees all this. So, I'm really thinking that we have uh, something going on electronically here. And some of this other stuff would work if I could get the engine cranking over a little bit faster. But this engine only cranks over so fast, so you're not going to get an RPM reading or anything like that. But we are getting some data. And also, if I turn the key back off, turn it back on. You can see I've got a check engine light here that comes on and comes off, which is right there. I don't know if you can see that. I'll do it one more time. I'll do it on. It's right about there. So here we go. One, two, three. Boom. See it right there? So that is coming on. So I know the computer is powering up and everything. So we're just not getting any spark to the spark plugs at this point. So we'll test the spark here, and I'll give you a good look. Here we got a plug wire going from the coil here, running up to the top of the manifold. And I basically have it grounded out here on the top of the uh, piece of aluminum here uh, on the compressor. And I've tested it here, and we're getting, you can see the green light coming on and off there. So we've got a ground. See that? Here we go. Kind of hard for me to see in the camera. So what we're going to do... Go ahead and crank on it. I'm going to zoom in on this plug. And I'm going to go inside and try to crank on it. Should be able to see if we have a spark right about there. i got to make sure this piece is not touching. All right, we'll try that out. I was going to make sure the diode wasn't touching anything else. But we still have a good ground here. You can see the light coming on. Tester there. So we're good. Okay, now let's go crank on it. And let's watch this. And as you can see, we have no sparky spark, but I can smell some fuel out here, so we know we're getting fuel. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. And the other thing is, I think we can rule out timing issues right now because this truck's only got 103,000 miles on it. It ran perfect. Like I said, he came out one day and just wouldn't start when he was cranking on it. And that's where we're at right now. All right, so now we've got to go ahead and do a little more detective work here. We've got to look at the crank sensor and the camshaft sensor. Okay, now we're under the engine, and of course the crankshaft is going to be right here on the passenger side. Now if you look right about there, see we've got a motor mount. See it wire right there? That's where the crankshaft sensor is. They could not have put that in a more worse place for removal. And I may actually have to move this motor mount out of the way 
in order to get in there because I've already tried to get that out and it's almost impossible to get out. If you look closely on the bottom of that sensor here, and I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Because if I zoom in, you can actually see the bottom part of that sensor right there. That plastic with the bolt sticking out, it's actually broke off. So the bolt came right out, but that sensor is really going to be an issue. And of course now we're on the driver's side. There is the uh, crankshaft pulley. They actually made this one here easy to get to and you can see I can just stick my hand up there, pull that wire off, take that little bolt out and take that sensor right off. So what we're going to do first is go ahead and pull this one off since it's the easier one because if we try to take the crankshaft sensor off we end up breaking it. Uh, you know if it's good well we're going to lose a little money but I really think the crankshaft sensor is bad. I've already ordered a new one and I've already done a test and let me show you what I've done on the test so far. This is what I'm going to be testing my sensors with. Yep, this is pretty old school, and you can get these really cheap. I've had this one here since, I believe, 1993. It says on the side of the box here. Um, yeah, 1993. This is actually a Sensor Tester Plus that came out. This is a CP9080, and you can still get these. Now, I do have an instruction book. It's kind of hard to deal with this stuff here try to figure this out if you don't have an instruction book but nevertheless this does do crank sensors and uh, basically here's the little tester that we got it takes a 9 volt battery you can do reluctance so uh, you can do sensor module you flip it on check the battery then you flip it up and you're ready to go to work and we have some leads here that we can connect to a sensor and test it and see if it's good or bad now you can do this with an ohms meter but most sensors with an ohms meter you might have to have some extra power some 12 volt power going to it but this here has its own little bit of power in here to be able to test these sensors so basically how this sensor works here you got uh, three wires on some of these crank sensors uh, you got you know the signal wire the common wire and, and the 9 volt power wire and uh, you can see both of my lights are off now if I hold this up here just like this and basically a lot of you know how crank sensors work you have a gear that slides past this and it creates a little resistance and if it works it has resistance uh, you'll get some uh, uh, information sent to the computer so basically this is a uh, your camshaft so if this goes in front of this like this see those lights they're blinking that means this sensor is actually good so basically in a nutshell that's how your uh, cam and crank sensors would work and I don't even have to touch that if I just get it kind of close you can see how sensitive that is pretty cool so this camshaft sensor here actually this is a crankshaft sensor this is a good one and now we'll hook up a bad one and show you the difference so here was the good one and here is a secondary one that is bad and we got everything all hooked up check our lead wires real quick one more time and if I hold this up here like this and take this piece of metal and slide across this one we don't get nothing no lights no nothing so I know this one's bad because I took it out of vehicle that's pretty cool. And just for fun, here's another sensor, and I believe this is a cam or crank. I'm not sure, but it only has two wires. And you can see when I hook this up, we have both of our lights on. Now, if I slide the piece of metal across the front of this here, watch this top light. You'll see it change uh, in color. Kind of see that there? Kind of blinking. The resistance is actually changing, so this is actually a good one. See that? So this is what we're going to use. This is why I keep all my old stuff. You never know. But like I said, you can test these with an ohms meter. So we're going to go ahead and test that crank sensor first on that uh, truck out there. So let's go do that real quick. Now luckily for me on this Dodge, the crankshaft sensor wire is fairly long. So that is really a big help. And you can see I got all my leads on there. And if I lift up the old uh, sensor here, you can see both of my lights are off. Now you're asking, well, how am I going to test it? Well, what I can do is put a... Uh, socket on the crankshaft and rotate it a little bit as I rotate it this lights these lights one of them should blink on and off or give me an idea if this is actually working all right so here's our socket this is a one and one quarter inch in case somebody wants to know there seems to be always somebody wanting to know bolt size put this on here now I have excess I can just crank this with one hand and also go ahead and test this sensor with the other all right, so our wires are still hooked up, and I got my hand over here. We'll turn this crank and see if we get any lights blinking here. I don't see anything. So I really think this crankshaft sensor on this side is dead. Of course, we'll go to the other side and 
We're going to take off that camshaft since they're on that side just for the heck of it, but since it's easy to get to, but boy, I don't see nothing here at all. Now you're asking, well, do I have it hooked up backwards? Well, not really. Uh, if you flip these around, it still doesn't come on. Now, if you notice the other sensor, I think I had that in the video. If you flip these around, both lights will come on and stay on. But if I even do this with this here, flip this around like this, and we still don't have any signal coming from that crankshaft. Well, actually, we have a light on right here, so. But they're constantly on. They should not be on for a crankshaft sensor test. We'll put this back on here and see if they go off. Maybe it's right on the reluctor ring. Nope. So. So it shows me that that sensor is not working whatsoever. All right, so let's go to the uh, camshaft sensor. All right, so we got the camshaft sensor out. <sighs> Good news. Bad news is, you see that little bolt right here? That thing was so rusted, I just barely put my wrench on it and started turning it. Broke it right off, so I'm going to have to make a clip to keep that sensor in there. Uh, because there's no way I'm pulling that whole front cover off. Drilling out a stupid bolt that they didn't design right to begin with. And here is a look at the bolt that broke off. So rusted, it just snapped right off. Just a little a little thing. What size socket was that? Let's see. According to this socket, it was a uh, 7 16th. So unbelievable. So I've had to fix these in the past before. So we'll just pull, we'll make a little clip and put on there. All right, so there's the camshaft sensor. We'll go ahead and pull it out. It's too bad the crankshaft sensor would be a little bit easier to get out, but uh, what are you going to do? Well, let's go test this. All right, so here is the camshaft sensor. We'll get it all hooked up. I'll hold this like this. And let's do this one here. See if these lights blink, meaning if your cam is spinning in front of this here, it should turn these lights on and off. All right, so this is good. So it looks like our crankshaft sensor is going to be the culprit. But we're going to go one step farther. We're going to yank it out the best we can. Hopefully if we can get it out one piece, we can do a test just like this. But um, I don't know. The way this camshaft bolt went, I don't think we're going to have much luck with the crankshafts. But that's all we can do is try. So Then again, if I could have got my probes up in here, I could have just spun the engine. And put these wires on there and test it that way. And we may, we may actually do that real quick. Out of curiosity, I don't think I can spin that engine fast enough for those lights to actually give me a test signal uh, from that cam sensor. So I'm going to go in and crank it. We got it, all the wires hooked up, and I put the cam shaft sensor back in. While I crank this engine over, I'm going to see if these actually blink. So let's check this out. All right, so that's pretty cool. We're in a, a position where that uh, cam is right up against it right now. So we're going to do the same thing now with the crank sensor before we pull it out. We're going to see if we get the same kind of lighting uh, codes over there, if you will. Here's the crank sensor side. There's our wires. And there's our tester. Now you're probably asking, well, how do you know which side is the power and the signal? Well, we're going to do this two times. We're going to flip it around. If we don't get anything on the first test, we'll flip the red and yellow wire around and we'll come back and test it again. So there's the tester. I got this set up like that. Let's go check it out. All right, so none of those works. Let's go ahead and flip these wires around. All right, let's go ahead and flip these around. Check out our light. Okay, so we got both of our lights on, so let's go crank it. It should blink on and off or something. They should not stay on constantly. All right, so we're set up there. Let's go crank on her. And you see that? Those lights didn't even flicker, so we know this sensor is bad. So that's good to know. It's amazing what a 20-year-old, uh, actually it would be 27 years old, I believe, 1993, can tell you that you can still pick up on eBay for about $25 or $30. So next step is to pull this sensor out and it's not going to be any fun. All right, kiddos, here's where we're at. Unfortunately, the motor mount has to come off uh, this bolt here. Uh, the head of it on the other side is an 18 uh, wrench, which I actually stuck on there 
to actually keep it in place so it doesn't turn. And the nut here, it is a 1316s. I put some oil here and the nut came off really easy, not that big of a deal. I should be able to tap this back a little bit, see. Yeah, be careful, don't mess up the thread. So it came out, it, it's backed out pretty far. Now the other thing you really have to do is get yourself a block of wood and put it in the oil pan and we'll have to lift this engine up a little bit to help get this uh, motor mount out. So have that ready. And here is the bottom of the transmission mount. I did loosen these bolts up just a little bit and I don't think it really made a difference, but I did it anyway. I just needed about an inch or so for the transmission and the motor to come up, just so you know. And make sure you retighten them when you're done. And also when you're jacking it up there with a big block of wood under the oil pan, just be careful, watch the oil pan. You don't want to bend it, but I think that oil pan's pretty sturdy, so we're only going to lift the engine up maybe a half inch to an inch, enough to get some pressure off of the motor mount. Other than that, this motor mount should come out fairly easy. Now we have three smaller bolts to take out real quick, but unfortunately I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm going to go ahead and tap this bolt out, take a hammer and a screwdriver, just kind of get it the rest of the way started through there. I'm at a weird angle, so I may have to move around. Alright, there's the motor mount bolt. It's a long one. I had to take a screwdriver. I actually jacked the engine up a little bit, because when you kind of push it in a little bit, if there's any weight on it, the engine will kind of push it down sideways, and you got to jack the engine up a little bit, and that'll straighten this up, and you can push it the rest of the way out. So we just have this bolt, this bolt, and that little bolt there. And I believe those are 12 or 13s, and we can start moving this motor mount around and try to get it out of the way. All right, so we got two of the bolts out, one right here and one right here. These are uh, 14. I put an extension up here, and I had to put a uh, swivel socket on this one because it kind of gets kind of go, goes across the frame here, is what I'm trying to say, as I lay upside down. And the back one here, you got to get a ratcheting wrench on here, and this is how I got it. Not a lot of room here. I put a secondary wrench on the back of this here like this to help it give me some leverage. And this one's coming off next. And we're going to get this off. And let's see, I'm hoping the motor mount's kind of loose. And it is. All right, great. So maybe this won't be too bad. I'm going to jack the bottom of the engine up a little bit, a couple inches, and watch everything on top. I think we can probably get this out of the way. If we can, this is going to free up a lot of room for us to get in there, and I tried to get in there with that sensor with a small pair of vice grips to grip it. There's just no room up in here whatsoever. But that's just the way it goes, you know? So, we just about got this out here as I keep talking to you guys. Hey, let me know where you're watching from right this minute. If you like the video, say hi. And obviously, if you want, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Alright, it's out. Here comes our, get our bolt out. All right, so there's our bolt, and it's hard to get the light just right because I got a little bit of light coming on the side here. And there's the motor mount. Now we got to get it out. It, it moves around, so all right, we'll bring the engine up. I'll see how far I can get it up. All right, so I'm not going to be able to get the uh, motor mount out, but what I did, I actually spun it around, put a big screwdriver in here, and pushed it back out of the way and the sensor is right there where my finger is. I don't know how well you can see that because the light is a little tough under here. But if I move my light, let me see if I can move my light here real quick. And now you can see where the sensor actually is. It's right here where my finger is. And now I can actually uh, get a pair of ice grips or something to grip this. Slowly work it around, maybe get it out. But, you know, if I could have got the motor mount out, it probably wouldn't have made a big difference because you got the housing here on the side of the frame that's in the way. But it's pushed out. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this out. I'll put a pair of ice grips and just kind of gently grip it and play around and just keep working it until maybe I can spin it and break it free. I've got some oil on there. So here we go. All right, guys, you talking about one hard... Um, I think I got it. Well, I'm at, I'm in a great position. I mean, I have great leverage, so I got the vice grips on here. I played around with these vice grips because I was afraid if I gripped it too hard, I would bust the end of it off and the uh, inner part would be stuck in. But I just kept playing around with it, and finally, look, it's loose. Well, I tell you what, I don't think I ever want to do another one. This is just too nerve-wracking. 
So I just got to work this a little bit and slowly pull it out. And I think we're going to have it here finally. So we'll take it out and we'll look at it and we'll inspect it. Well, I'm going to see if the metal goes all the way in and all the way out. If it's one shell, then you don't really have an issue gripping it and busting it. But we'll talk about that if we get this out. All right, guys. Unbelievable. I cannot believe this is the hardest sensor I've ever had to take out of anything in my life. But there it is. I had to take the vice grips off of it, maybe. Yeah. Oh, we'll get the vice grips off. There we go. Wow. There's what we were fighting. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it. But it is off. Now, I will tell you, I did use a screwdriver on those vice grips. Put it behind the vice grips. And as I was rocking this back and forth, I was trying to pry it out a little at a time. And that really worked. And look at all the rust. And also, this seal right here is what was actually stuck. The rust on the block was actually catching on this seal. So let's take it outside and look at it. But yeah, we got it. I'm going to go ahead and test it. And, of course, I've got my wires here. I've got the uh, signal and our power wire backwards. That's why we have both lights. So let's go ahead and run our piece of metal in front of this and see if the lights even flicker. Nothing. So let's go ahead and switch. Well, actually, you probably can't even see that, can you? Let's do it again. All right. No flickering or anything. So we got the... Uh, signal and the power wire backwards so we'll flip this around and i'm hoping this is the issue i you know i would almost bet this is the issue here so all right so lights are off and now we'll run this piece of metal across the front of this and see if it blinks or anything nope we have a dead sensor so there you go so now we'll wait for the new one to come in, and I have it on on. The battery is good, my battery test, and I have it on module sensor. So, all right. So let's look at this sensor real quick here. And um, what I was just saying a minute ago, I was worried about gripping. You can see where I gripped it right here. There's vice grips. And this is pretty hard plastic, and there may be a piece of metal in there, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what. It took the abuse of that vice grip, and you can see this is where the piece comes down here, and there's a bolt that bolts this on there. It actually broke off, but it's only in the engine about this far, and the block is like right there where my thumb is. But I guess there's so much rust out here on the outside, when you're pulling this out, this o-ring catches that rust and you just got to keep working and working and working so my advice is after going through all that like i just went through and unfortunately you may have to move that motor mount go ahead and grip this and i think you're going to be okay just don't go crazy with it just kind of experiment around with the grip and yours may actually come right out but this here is a original one it's got 103,000 miles on it and we'll wait for a new one and we'll test it and put it on and hopefully this will Fix that big old V10 in that Dodge Ram. All right, everyone. We got a brand new cam sensor in today. There's a look at it. Nice and pretty. Ordered on eBay. Search around on Google. You know, you can get them for about $120, $110. Just go ahead and test this one out here. And remember how I did the other ones. With these clips and so forth. Put the light there. Put a red clip on this side here. Let's see. Okay, I think we're good. And we'll put the uh, signal wire on the other one here and make sure. All right, so, so both of my lights are on now. Now I've got to flip this around because so i got to get the uh, signal and the uh, power wire on the right side here. And there is that. All right, our lights are off. Ah, we'll do this again. Getting all excited here. All right, so we'll take our piece of metal. And we'll slide in front of this and let's see if we get any lights. Oh, yeah. We got a good cam sensor here, baby. So, uh, all we gotta do now is go ahead and stick this one in. So, uh, this is one way you can test your crank and camshaft sensor. Spend 20 bucks and buy one of these things. These are cool. All right, so let's get this on. All right, so we're cleaning out our hole. You want your hole nice and clean before you stick it in. 
because there's a lot of rust and dirt in here I've cleaned out before you put that sensor in and uh, it feels pretty good in there I've got a lot of it out and on the sensor make sure you put some heavy grease on it and work it in slowly because you don't want to break this it'll ruin your day it may take a little wiggling but we'll get it in not a lot of room here still but uh all right kids that is one installed crank sensor i actually had to come up to the front of the engine where i can get a better grip on it and i worked it back and forth and pushed on at the same time and it'll eventually go in it takes a little patience but uh, it's all hooked up so i'm gonna go ahead and hook a couple wires up here and curiosity has got the best of me i want to go ahead and see if this will fire up before we go ahead and put the motor mount on all right so one bad crank sensor out and one good crank sensor in let's see if this baby starts up we're just gonna let it run for a few minutes not even that, maybe just 10 or 15 seconds because I still have to put the motor mount in. So let's prime it. One, two, three. Let's hit the switch and let's see what we got. Hell yeah! That was our problem the whole time. Great, she's purring like a kitten. I love it when a plan comes together, don't you? Sounds good. It's got a little bit of an exhaust leak, but hey, what do you expect from a V10, right? I am so happy this job is done. All right, everyone, we're done. Everything's in. Uh, the motor mount bolts, my tip for you for that is... Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and put the plate on first and start all the bolts with your fingers. Make sure they're going. Don't that way you won't be cross-threading them because it's very easy to cross-thread them. Then jack your motor up a little bit or down and then slide this big bolt through here. I've often in the past I've actually gotten bolts cross-threaded because you get two of them in and the back one, you know, and you can't get up straight and it starts cross-threading. So that's the best tip. And also, we can go ahead and lower the jack down. And one more quick thing. And also, the last thing is, there's a little clip. There's the sensor, and right below it there, I think you can kind of see it right here where my finger is. There's a clip here, kind of kind of a C-clip that is keeping that sensor in place. Now, there's no engine crank case pressure or anything, so I don't have to worry about that blowing out until we decide later what we might want to do. That should hold it for now. We'll keep an eye on it. I've done this in the past and it's worked out pretty well. And I know it's not a permanent fix or a professional fix, but for now, that's the only choice we have and it should work for a while. So kind of be aware of that. My advice would be is do not take that bolt off. If you can test that sensor, crank sensor there, test it while it's still on the engine, crank it over like I did. Put a tester on it and see if that crank sensor is actually good because uh, that's probably what I should have done first. And in a nutshell, it's kind of like this. This part goes in behind the housing and this part goes over the front of the sensor. kind of keeps it in there. And it's kind of springy so you want to bend it enough or when you put it in there it kind of holds it in there. So that's how I did that. Alright guys, we're going to wrap this video up. You know, it's a shame this is still a good looking truck. It needs some love and care right now before it gets too late. But... Uh, that's the way it goes. We'll let the owner decide on that, but we're going to start it up one more time before we uh, end the video. I mean, she sounds good. No leaks. I've checked everything outside underneath. Check that camshaft. It's great. And she idles just like it should. But uh, like I said, the old girl is going to need some love really soon. So but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And until my next video, guys, I'll see you later.